All right. Those of you who went to Vegas before the season and put down $100 on Spencer Knight to save the season in <laughs> Game 5 of the playoffs, I'm broke. I need money. Send money now. <laughs> Incredible. Now, I'm recording this in the morning. I'm only going to use it if Spencer Knight actually is in goal. But that said, i got to give my brother credit. He's been bitching about it since the first game. Since before the series started, he said, play Knight. And if this kid comes back and saves this series, uh, he's never going to shut up about it. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Just like Fluffy never shuts up. What are you barking at? Nothing. Literally nothing. I'm looking the other direction. He, he doesn't know what he's barking at. He's, he's just a camera hog. <laughs> exactly. Before I came up, hit the refresh button, 1,000 subscribers. We friggin' did it. We did it. And I mean we. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Very, very appreciative. Now, next stop, a million. <laughs> or a thousand and one. Whichever comes first, but I'm stoked. All right. As of right now, as of this moment, Right now, Spencer Knight is, looks like is going to start a, a playoff elimination game for us. And just it's just been wild. It's just been crazy. But look, Bob, Drieger, neither one of them really, you know, they did not grasp the opportunity by the cojones. You see what I'm saying? They, they just, just didn't. Um, not, can't, can't blame it all on them, but at the same point, I mean, I love it. I love it. I had a feeling Q would have the cojones to do it. But, of course, by the time the game starts, you never know. But from what it looked like, what's being reported, it looks like not only is Knight going to get the start, but Driga will be the backup and Bobrovsky will be scratched. That, that is a hell of a lead-in to the offseason. You know what I'm saying? Now... If Knight goes out tonight and eh, not so much, you know what I mean, lays a duck, we're eliminated. The offseason is going to go one particular way. However, <laughs> if 20-year-old Spencer Knight comes in and steals a game or two or the series, if, if some miraculous event happens, we've got a hell of a mess on our hands come the offseason because if if the dude comes in and wins three playoff games and eliminates the cup champions at that point you probably have to consider the possibility that he's ready to be an NHL starter it's just a theory that I'm working on right now at the very least at the very least if he can pull off even a good game or two you're looking at a, a situation next season where we would be it would be ridiculous not to have an even split with him and Bob. So we've talked about it, talked about it, and talked about it, where at some point we're going to have to find a way to get rid of Bob. And it just makes me wonder if that, if, if Knight somehow pulls this off and we still have Drieger in our pocket. You see what I'm saying? Weirder things that happen. You know, weirder things have happened. Miracles could happen. There's a long, long way to see what's going to go on, but... I like chaos, and this is shaping up to be one hell of a chaotic offseason. <laughs> All right, um, Q did not really want to give too much of the lineup away. He said one other change is likely. Like I said at the end of the last recap, um, I, I would be shocked if you don't see Yandel back on the ice 
and probably none of our are off. Or maybe we're going to go 7D. You know, uh, we kind of give Q a bunch of crap for that 7D. However, the one night we did go 7D, we only gave up two goals. Problem is we only scored one. Um, last thing I'll say before we move on to the game, especially if we've got another tight game like we've, like we've had except for the last one. Like in game two, when it was 2-1, I thought for sure you're going to put Barkov and Huberto on a line together near, you know, last five, ten minutes of the game to try to pull some kind of thing out. He hasn't done it yet. Obviously, the last game wasn't close, so there's no need to do it. But if you're going to be pulling out all the stops and playing Spencer Knight, don't be surprised if we've got a one-goal game where we're down or even, you know, where we need an extra goal, or even if we're up a goal. Don't be surprised to see Barkov and Huberto on the line together to make some magic happen like they used to. All right, so 1,000 subscribers, guys. Really, really, really appreciate it. I'm going to have another video coming out tomorrow about what that's going to mean for the channel, some of the things I'm going to be able to do once I get my watch time hours up. I'm close on that, too, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. Hopefully, we're talking about it in preparation for Game 6. Tonight, we're definitely, let's get to It's one nothing Tampa after one. There's a lot of things I want to say right now, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to jinx or I just, I, I'm going to wait. Some of you might know what I want to say, but I'm going to wait. Spencer Knight, dude, was that 21, 22 saves after the first one? Gets by him on a break, on a, on a two-on-one where Keith Yandel, I mean, how many times have we seen him get beaten by that same move? All right, where they just bounce the puck off the boards, and he's too slow to recover. And then Q goes and doubles down on stupid, and even though we were three for three on the power play without Yandel, he puts Yandel back on the freaking power play. These are the things that make me just want to strangle this coach. Because he does make some good moves, and then he does some things that just defy any sense of logic whatsoever. You re we're, the power play sucks. You remove Keith Yandel, we go three for three, and then you put him back in. What planet, dude? I'm telling you, I know it's, a, it's not funny because I know it's a real condition. But I'm telling you, the way that this guy coaches makes me wonder if he has sundowners. And I'm not, I'm being joking and serious at the same time. He makes some of the stupidest, stupidest decisions that to everybody on the planet is the most obvious thing not to do. That said, look what happens when we have a goalie that is shutting the door after the defense makes the stupid mistake and we get one goal. Instead of it being 3 nothing or 5-1, it's only one nothing, and we're going to get one. Frank Vitrano, if you don't get a goal in this game, kaputs, out to Seattle with you. Make it a nice, easy decision for us, all right? I know you're playing hard. I know you, you've had some chances, but why are you here? If you're the big game. You're the big goal guy, all right? You are the big goal player. That's what makes you Frank for Tank. That's what makes you for Toronto, all right? Now. I'm a little jacked up. I had some coffee. I didn't really eat much. <sighs> Last thing here real quick. Um, somebody, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. Somebody, I think Flamingo. I think it's Flamingo, but I think I'm wrong there. On the live stream, somebody asked me, hey, how come after the third period, the last game, when we go to overtime, that I didn't recap the third period like I normally do? So I, uh, the thing about that is I thought about it. I thought about it. I almost did it. But... It's a really good idea, so I will do that. From now on, when we go to overtime, I will put the we are going to overtime thing because Matthias has got to stay. But from now on, when we go to overtime, I will recap the third period just like I do the other periods. Tonight, I want nothing to do with it, all right? I want Spencer Knight in the W column and a big fat mess in the offseason when he's done stealing this series. <laughs> Let's go to the second period. It's 2-1 Panthers after 2. I'm not saying it. I'm not going to say it. Let's talk about something else. 
Mason Marchman with another big, another big goal in the playoffs. And we rode his ass all year long complaining about him being on the top line. And he now has two goals in the playoffs. And tonight, right now, as of right now, he's got the game-winning goal. And we are on fire. And that freaking stadium, that arena, whatever you want to call it, is absolutely on fire. Now, it's still an elimination game. And it's still the Cup champs. Okay? We're going to need, we need, we need, need more goals. All right? I don't I don't see I don't see Tampa just sliding out of this 2-1. Okay. We're gonna need to keep that pressure on. Stay out of the box. Let's let's get this sucker to game six, guys. And that is two! That is two! Alright, alright, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I said it. Somewhere around the third game when Spencer Knight played, I came on and said, Spencer Knight is ready. I tried to make it a joke because I didn't want too much flack, and a few people kind of like, eh, don't get ahead of yourself. Spencer Knight is ready. All right? I mean, let's just, can we, can we just call it? Can we just call it? Bob is overpaid, and Spencer Knight is ready. The, the dude is just, uh, for whatever reason, for whatever magical reason, the universe has decided to bestow upon the Florida Panthers the freaking second coming of the greatest goaltender ever. I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. The point is, this 20-year-old kid that just that just shut down the Lightning, shut down the Cup champs in a, in a playoff elimination game. His first playoff game, after allowing a goal on the first shot of the game, holy crap. And now... Now, Florida Panther fans, now you get to see what this team looks like when it gets a big performance from its goaltender. All right? Holy crap. That kid was insane. I mean, our, I, don't, I can't say our defense played any better or worse. I mean, okay, they didn't have the breakaways, so we'll, we'll, we'll start there. They didn't have the breakaways. And obviously, the first period, our defense played like our defense, all right? Once we got ahead 2-1, then we kind of like, oh, crap, and we really locked down. So the defense absolutely played differently, okay? But that first period, that's Florida Panthers' defense most of the time, okay? And the thing of it is, is that the difference was, what did I say, all right? You get the big saves from your goaltender, it's one nothing instead of 3 nothing, 5 nothing, 5 one whatever the hell the case may be. So... We move on to game six in Tampa, and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Every test so far, this kid has passed. Every test so far, this kid has passed. And I'm telling you right now, I know <laughs> what's funny is I'm listening to myself say exactly what I said I would say, and then also I said at the end of the last recap, do not believe me when I said what I'm about to say, but we are right, dead. We have a chance. <laughs> And and we do, we do. This this is different than if like we had played Drieger and we you know we pulled one out four three or something. This is different, okay? You know, I I understand the whole thing about the you know they don't have a lot of film on night, and at some point they might figure out some weaknesses. But I don't think that's happening in the next couple of games right now, okay? So I I have confidence that we have a pretty damn good chance that this kid might pull out the series. At least get us to Game 7. If we get to Game 7, did you see that crowd? Did you see the crowd? If we get this Game 7, we're moving on. So this this Game 6, to me, this Game 6 is, is just as big, obviously, as the Game 7. Because I feel like if we win now, well, we're going to roll on through in Game 7. I can, I, can, I can almost taste it. Now, for those of you who are not used to this channel, the bitching and complaining I did about for Toronto and saying goodbye to Seattle... Anybody who's been on his channel knows that's what I do. I bitch about somebody so it gets them to play better. I don't want for trying to go to, to, to Seattle. And he did finally get one. He got the empty net goal, which we always know. When a guy is slumping, give him that empty net goal, and all of a sudden he'll pick it up. So look out for Frank coming in game six and game seven because that's got him off the schneid. Now he's going to be good to go. Barkoff and Huberto. Finally, these two showed up on the same night in a playoff game. It had only taken so long. 
but you could finally see, you could, you could feel it, that they were just kind of like, you know what, enough of this bullshit. I am tired of losing these games. I want to win. You could see that today on the ice. Barkov, obviously, feeling better with whatever was bothering him. Huberto playing out of his mind. Owen Tippett, now I know he missed the shot there at the end, and he does need to bury his chances, but he's getting chances. The kid is playing out of his mind right now. That entire second line, that entire second line in reality almost is our top line with the exception of Mason Marchment, playoff hero. <laughs> okay? I mean, what are you doing? Bob, Bob is over here poking me with his cigar. Yeah, we're, oh, I do believe I need a Spencer Knight puppet. Oh, I've got a Bob puppet. I need Spencer Knight something. Something's going down. Jersey, cards, something. That's got to go down really quick. What else did we see tonight? Mason Marchant, like I said, just absolutely, like Goldie said, playing the game of his life tonight. That kid was just, everybody, everybody was just absolutely giving every last bit of possible effort that you could see. I'm trying to roll through my head here. I don't want to leave anybody out. All right? Um, Achari played his game defensively. Defensively. Weger was not exactly having a good night, okay? He was doing that thing again where it looks like he's just trying too damn hard. He's pressing, and he's just he just doesn't look calm. He looked panicked. But that goal settled him down, all right? The goal, he finally gets a goal. That settles him down. First playoff goal ever for him, and I think he'll be okay. The thing I got to say, look, Yandel, just no, just no, just... All right, we're not going to bench Yandel because we just only allowed one goal, okay? But damn, is he a liability. Every time he has the puck, it's just nerve-wracking. But the guy I got to give credit to is Strawman. Now, for those of you who have not been watching the Panthers this year, the Strawman that we're seeing on the ice right now, that's not the dude, okay, that has played the rest of the season. I don't know who that guy is in the number six jersey, Maybe he went back in time a few years, but if he was playing like that all year, we wouldn't be bitching about him, okay? Whatever. The dude is sticking, you know, stepping it up for the playoffs. I don't want to see really any lineup changes. And I know somebody's going to say he handles shouldn't be in, but you don't break up a winning lineup. I know he's a liability. I know he cost us, you know, a big part of that first goal. Just as long as we keep him off the damn power play and limit his, his minutes... I don't, I'm not one of those guys that likes to mess with a winning lineup. And who are you going to put? Who are you going to put there? Connaughton? You can't, I mean, yeah, maybe. But we just held Tampa to one goal. So, and to be honest, you know, in game two, we held them to two goals. So when we decide to play defense and we get a good performance from our goaltender, we see what happens. So look, Tampa's going to come out game six. They're going to be buzzing. Because I can guarantee you there's one thing for sure. They want nothing to do with that arena come game seven. All right? They they, they uh, want nothing to do. And I know there's some Tampa fans that are going to come on. And there's some nice Tampa fans. And then there's a couple guys that want to talk trash and everything. Which is fine. It's hockey. We can trash talk. But I guarantee you, even as a Tampa fan, you've got to want to finish this off at, in six at home because you bring this sucker back here to Florida, you know, b b back here to the arena here, you know, for the home for the Panthers. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Tampa wants to finish in Tampa. Let's we'll put it that way. All right. That's enough. I'm a mumbling, bumbling mess. I'm absolutely just ecstatic about this. I knew, look, in the live stream, for those of you who joined the live stream, I guarantee to win. I've never done that before. I don't like to do that. I thought about it, I thought about it, I thought about it, and I said, the hell with it. I'm guaranteeing a win. Now, I'll let you know about game six. <laughs> I'm guaranteeing a game seven win. If we win game six, I'm guaranteeing a game seven win. How do you like that? All right? Woo! All right, I'm going to get this wrapped up and edited up. Thank you, everybody. I hit 1,000 subscribers today, right before the live stream, on Spencer Knight's first playoff game. Just absolutely beautiful. I will be back at some point during the day tomorrow. 
with at least one video probably just one but I, you know i'm excited right all right game six wednesday and then we go to game seven on friday and there's a party there's a friggin party in south florida over the weekend when we're done with this team all right we're gonna pull this up spencer knight I don't think Tampa, I don't think you guys can figure him out that fast, right? Nobody's been able to figure him out, okay? The dude is just straight up, he, to me, I watch him, and he reminds me of Luongo, to be honest. He, he actually, actually, I'm going to take that back. And not that he doesn't remind me of Luongo. He reminds me, as far as, as Panther goalies, reminds me of Beezer during that 96 run, where he was just apoplectic and all over the place. And the last thing I'll say is I say you got to leave it the same way. You don't change the lineup. Drieger's the backup. Bob is scratched. And we officially have a $10 million backup goalie. <laughs> I don't care, man. Let's just win around and get the cup. Appreciate everybody who's watching. I'll see you tomorrow.